I was a teenage fascist. I had a problem relating to other kids almost from the very beginning. My mother was lonely and had a creative temperament, which she wasn't able to express publicly, so she would play the piano for hours to a captive audience, me. This confused me, I was only five, so I retreated to the dark space under the kitchen table, taking a small portable radio with me. Soul music became my best friend, the coasters, the platters, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, they were my constant companions. When I disappeared from view, my mother realized that something had changed. So she started giving piano lessons to the neighborhood kids. This gave her a new audience, leaving me alone in my cave, licking my wounds. When I got old enough to read, I devoured the few books my father had laying around the house from his childhood. Tom Slate on a transport, Pee Wee Harrison Luck, and Horatio Alger's Sink or Swim. He also had some Reader's Digest condensed books that I think he rescued from the trash during the Boy Scout paper drive. He also used to take Playboys <laughs> during the Boy Scout paper drive. So shut up. I'm going to blame... <laughs> I'm going to... Which may be a loser. No. I'm going to blame Tom Slate for the next turn my young brain took, a drift into fascism because his spellbinding adventure took place during the Great War. I believe most fascists are tormented teenagers at heart, unable to empathize with other people, angry at their social isolation, wanting to force folks to pay attention to them, and that's why so many of them get into weapons and military stuff. I got fixated on war and killing for those same reasons. I asked my mom if she would buy me some books on the subject so I could satisfy my curiosity. She was more than happy to it, fit in with her notion of the creative life. I would now turn out to be an artist like her, a writer rather than a pianist, true, but that was okay. But I was heading in a different direction. We went to the mall and the first book I picked out was Battle, Story of the Bulge by John Tolan, and it got worse. Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, Stuka Pilot, Panzer Leader, Mein Kampf, I read them all. I became a self-loathing non-Jew, sitting in my bedroom, stewing in all the sad juices of my loneliness and despair, I had a plastic Luger I would wave around, shooting at the shadows as they converged on me. I am so fucking lucky that my mom got me a copy of Catch-22 by mistake, thinking it was a war book like all the others. That book, with its humanity and humor, changed my life. I went on to read The Beats, Howl, Coney Island of the Mind and On the Road, books I bought myself. I was scared. I'd finally come to the realization of just how far from Norman humor, <laughs> Norman, normal human interaction I'd gotten. It's really an emotional reading. <laughs> when I went away to college, I gladly left behind all the labels that had been attached to me in high school, one of them being loser. One night while hanging out in front of the freshman dorm with some friends, I flagged down a white MTA sports car and asked the girl who was driving it if she would give me a ride, and she said yes. And even though it was only a ride up Mount Penn and back, no sex, no kissing even, I knew I had entered a new world. I asked her if I could see her again, and she said yes again. I found out later that she wrote poetry, and I asked her what that entailed. She showed me some of her work, and I never looked back. Thank you. Yeah.